Hi friends, welcome to Stampin' with Wow. It's Jennifer Sasaki, your favorite Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So, what do you want to make today? This is a cute little basket I made using the mercury glass acetate paper that we have in our spring catalog, or our, excuse me, January to June 2021 catalog. Isn't that cute? And I used the Butterfly Brilliant stamp set, or actually really the dies. Um, and I just think it came out so cute. So I was gonna, this one I use, I made using a six inch square of this mercury acetate paper, or it's not paper, it's really like plastic or acetate really. <laughs> um, but we're gonna make a eight and a half inch square using mint macaroon, and we'll continue using the Butterfly Brilliance. And I just remembered that the blade on my paper trimmer, this guy, is dull. So I, you get to see how quick and easy you can replace this guy. So there's just a little, um, there's just a little groove right in here. See that little, it's like almost a triangle or I mean a diamond right there. That's... Try and see if I can see it on the camera. That's how you get these out. And um, when you know this is dull, is it starts shredding your paper. And I cut a magnetic sheet the other day and I probably shouldn't have cut it with this trimmer. I was too lazy to grab another trimmer. So I think that immediately dulled the blade because right after that, it just went kaput. But our refill blades come in a four pack. I think they're about $5 for the four pack, which is a pretty nice price. Um, I could be wrong. Let me check the annual catalog real quick. I don't want to tell you that. And then it's $10. I don't believe they're like super expensive though. Where's the trimmer? There it is. The cutting blade multi-pack. Oh, I'm sorry. You get four of them for $12. So that's about $3, $3 each, which isn't bad because if you have a Fiskars, you pay a lot of money for the Fisker refills too. So, but it's nice as you have four. So, you know, you have a lot before you um, run out. Like, you know how all of a sudden you're in the middle of a craft project and your blade's dull and you're like, oh crud, my blade's dull, right? Well, that doesn't have to be the case because you'll get four. So what I did is I created some cheat sheets. So here's the here's the finished basket I made using the eight and a half inch square. It's pretty big. Like you could really put a lot of like Easter goodies in here. Um, the opening dimensions. This one's slightly different because I followed someone else's tutorial when I made this one and then I modified it. So the opening is about four and, I'm gonna say four and a half by um, three and a half. So I'm changing it a little bit because um, I found that when I did this, I wanted, oh, I didn't want it, I think I didn't want it so wide, so I changed the modifications a little bit but if if you like that opening um all the difference is is that instead of a three inch score it's two and a half inch score on all four sides so that was the only thing that changed i just wanted to change the dimensions a little bit i also will go over the six inch one that i made here with the acetate which is really cute um and this one's really nice because since it's made out of that acetate it's pretty sturdy as far as um, you wouldn't need to reinforce it or anything depending on what you put inside it. And it's cute. And I just thought with one 12 by 12 sheet of acetate paper, you could make at least three because you do need to cut a piece for the, um, the handle or yeah, handle. So, um, so yeah, you could easily get three of these off of one 12 by 12 sheet. So I thought that was cute. And this could easily hold at least two Cadbury eggs and some other jelly beans and stuff. So if you were 
hosting a brunch or something, these would be a cute little favor to have um, on the, at the table on Easter Sunday. Or anything, if you were having a, a spring tea or something, that would be really cute. Now, since we are slowly getting past our pandemic, woohoo, the pandemic is coming. Not, not going to say to an end, but it has got, I know our, here in Las Vegas, our numbers have gotten a lot better. So we are, I think we are up to 50% capacity for most things, which is really big for us because... We were not, we're not a free state like Texas and them. <laughs> it's, it's fine. We've survived. Okay, so I wrote out the instructions so it's easier to understand because it's, it's a little complicated what we're going to do. But first thing we're going to do is we are going to, um, we're going to cut this down to an eight, eight and a half inch square. So this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. And we're just going to cut it to an eight and a half inch square. So this side's already eight and a half. So we're just going to take this side to eight and a half. Just measuring it up. And there we go. And we're going to save this piece for our strap. Okay. So for the handle of the basket. Okay, so I'll go over this before we start doing it. So on here, the easiest way to describe this, since it was since I changed it from being the same measurement on all four sides of the score, is I kind of did a north, south, east, west. So on the north and south sides, you're gonna score it at two and a half inches. And on the east and west sides, you're gonna score it at three inches. And then on the north side, you're going to cut the one inch strip. So that's why I modified it was because I wanted the strips we cut to be um, evenly, evenly divided into three. And two and a half inches did not evenly divide into three. So <laughs> that was the main reason I changed these. I just wanted to keep it simple. And then we're going to repeat that. So you're going to cut these into one and a half inch strips. So on the north and south side. And then on the east and west side, there's this one quarter inch score. So um, the video, she just kept trimming, like she would fold down this paper. I think that's an optional feature because when I did the acetate, it didn't, I wouldn't have put a quarter inch score on acetate. It just would have been, the acetate's too strong for that small of a fold. So, but anytime you fold paper, you reinforce it. So I'm not going to argue on that. So let's go ahead and start the scoring and then we'll get into the cut strips. Okay, so the easiest thing to remember is on two of these sides, you're going to do two. These are all parallel, right? So if I do two and a half inches on this side, I'm doing two and a half inches on this side as well. And I... I always like to slide my cutting blade far away. Sometimes I take it out. If I'm just gonna score a whole bunch of things, I'll take out my blade for a while because nothing's worse than you're halfway through scoring and you grab that cutting blade all of a sudden. So we're just gonna create a hole all the way down. At the two and a half inches are here, just come all the way down. And then I'm gonna flip it. So there's that one score line. So parallel, which I'm over here now. So two and a half inches again. So we could say that this is the north and this is the south. And here's my two inch, two and a half inch score lines. Now we're going to flip it to the east and the west. And we're going to score three inch score lines. So as long as you keep the measurements parallel, it doesn't matter about the north, south, east, west. It just matters that on... You have three inches, three inches, two and a half, two and a half, right? So what we're going to do is this three inch piece right here, we're going to cut the one inch strips. Because if you, if you use the two and a half, you're going to have to get into some weird fractions to evenly disperse that into three strips. So we're going to stay where this is the three inch side. So just like this picture right now is how I have my paper. So if I took my ruler, this is the three inches, that's the two and a half. So I want this three inch so I can make these cuts. So these solid lines are the cuts I'm gonna make, right? 
So we're gonna start with, I like to start in my valley. So, um, so you're only gonna go up to that first cut line. So let me see if I can bring you down. I don't know if you'll see any better the score lines. But that first score line I have is, I call it the valley. So I put that in my trimmer gutter, the cutting blade gutter. And I'm only going to go up to this score line right here. Well, I was filming and then I hit my phone accidentally. I'm going to bring you down again after I have. Okay, so when I cut down, I'm going to cut here to that point, And then I'm going to cut here. So I'm in my gutter. And I'm gonna take, I'm gonna come up, cut here. See here how smooth that blade is. Be earlier it was just eating the paper. <laughs> and then that was at three inches, so I'm gonna come down to two inches and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut up to that score line. And then I'm gonna come up here and cut down to that score line. And then I'm gonna come to the one inch and I'm gonna repeat this one more time. So what I'm gonna have are three strips that are attached to my paper. See, I have three strips attached to my paper. And then we're gonna repeat that on this side. So now we're gonna do these, one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? So again, we're gonna start with that a score line in the cutting gutter and we're just going to go up to that first score line which is the two and half inch mark and then we're going to slide our paper over to the two inch line and we're going to do the same and one more time we're going to come to the one inch line this just makes it much easier when you're cutting this, th these little strips. So um, if you want, you could probably, instead of having this score be two and a half inches, you could make that three and make it three inches all around. The inside of your basket would get smaller and these strips would get longer, which might not be the best because then they'll overlap a lot more. So now what we need is I want a quarter inch score right here in this center edge. So I'm gonna, this this line, this first line right here is a quarter inch. So I'm just gonna bump it up to there and I'm gonna take my scoring tool and I'm only scoring in this little center piece right there. So right here's the score. And then I'm gonna flip that and I'm gonna do the exact same thing and only score right in there. If you do a half inch, it's too short for the, the straps, this, these strips to adhere over here. So then we're done with the scoring tool. I mean the cutting. So what I do to save time, first let's go ahead and fold everything. And I'm gonna say nothing, this, this little guy needs a uh, crease. He's probably the only guy who really needs a that's the only fold that needs a really good crease. And then the rest, just fold it over. Fold the sides. Oops. Let me come up a little bit more again since we're... Fold these sides, right? And then this other quarter inch piece, we're gonna score that down. And then um, these two, they're just going to curve. So you can give them a slight crease, but you don't, need a, you don't need a strong fold on any of it. So what I found easiest to do is I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus, which is the dark blue and it's more permanent um, adhesive. It's a stronger adhesive than our regular Stampin' Seal. So just for easiness for me, I just run a whole strip across. And you want to be close to the edge. So that's all I did. And I'm doing that on each side because um, now if you have a hard time with the adhesives, like it gets sticky everywhere and 
don't don't do the extra side just work on one side but i just found that once the curve starts on the other side it's easier to already have these adhesives in place so what we're going to do is this guy's going to get folded up like so and then i'm going to take this bottom strip or this closest strip and i'm just going to place it when that point that point hits the top right and then I'm gonna line this one up the same way. And it's okay if you have overhang, don't worry about it. You'll, um, it'll get hidden or you can trim it at the end. So I'm just laying them when the point is over the fold, right? So then this guy, he's coming in at an angle. So he hides some of that that was hanging over. And then this guy should be like that. And then all of this, we're gonna hide that with, um, actually, he should be down lower, sorry. Cause we can't see that um, little paper anymore. Or you can stack them all on top right here so they're all meeting nice and neat down here. Like you can do however you want. So if I lift these back up, I could do it more like that. And then I trim off this stuff that you see or you can probably stick the strap in there and it'll hide it too. Then we're gonna move to this side, so I just pull them apart. This is a really simple basket to make for how it looks. It looks a little complicated, but it, other than the scoring and the um, strip cutting, it's pretty simple. So all I did is, let me move these aside so you can see better. So I just line up that first strip where the point is under the is staying on the cardstock basically. So there's my first two. Then I'm going to bring the next the middle strip and I'm just trying to keep the points on the paper. So nothing's really overhanging. And then we'll just come in a little bit more like that and like that. And then we're gonna put something on these right here so you can't see all that. Um, what I did before with that little quarter inch is I glued it down. So let me, uh, I should have done that earlier. So let me just get out some Tombow and fold that down. Let me hold it a second. There we go. All right, so now we have the base of our basket, right? A cute little Easter basket. Now, where'd I put that? Okay, so here's that piece that was my extra. That was my salvage from my eight and a half by 11. And I took out the quarter, eight and a half inch square. So now this is what's left. So this is eight and a half and it's two and a half inches. So what I did, I'm not even going to cut this. I'm just going to score it. And um, I want a one inch wide stra uh, strap or handle. So I took, so this is two and a half inches. If you minus one inch, you get one and a half. And if you split that in half, you have three fourths of an inch on both sides. So I'm going to score at three. Oh, see how I do that? <laughs> All right, well, do I have another handy strip? Is that eight and a half? Yeah, all right, well, replay. Let me just make sure I grab the right color. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this real quick to two and a half inches. All right, now we'll go back to where we were at. All right, so back to the math of minusing one from two and a half gives you one and a half. Split the one and a half, and it's a three-fourths inch on both sides is going to be the score. So what this is doing is it's giving you a two-ply handle without any raw edges. So I have a three-fourths inch here and a three-fourths inch here, and in the middle is a one inch. So when I fold this... What I'm getting is they overlap here and that just makes my handle that much stronger. 
Now, the key on that would be to use some designer series paper. And on this side, put the designer series paper so that it um, hides the seam. And then when someone's holding it, they don't feel the seam either. So we're gonna go ahead and gonna have to pick some designer series paper for that. And that might be hard because this is a little bit longer than, um, I was gonna try to use Bread Butterfly Brilliance. And it's a little bit longer than six inches. So we could trim down our handle. So another key trick is you wanna take your bone folder and help curve your handle, like your curling ribbon or something, just so you help relax the fibers. And I'm not gonna cut it back. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just leave the same, I'll glue it and we won't worry about it. So then, so I'm gonna let this part be on the underneath and then we're going to glue these in you can put them on the inside or the outside and i was thinking about slipping them in here i'm going to tape it down but that's where i'm going to stick these is in between the bat inside of the basket and the strips something like that all right so let's go ahead and adhere this so we probably only need um i'm just gonna use this we could use tombow but i don't want to i want it to be quick and then i'm just gonna put some stamping steel right at the edge of both ends of my handle and then when i stick it in so i'm going in between like the box part and these straps we put together and I want it in deep enough that my tape is in there. And I'm gonna repeat that on this side as well. So I'm just really leaving um, the last two strips on the outside and the handles coming in there. So then what I wanted to do, isn't that cute? So now these dimensions are, it's almost four, it's almost one, let's say one at three and three fourths by oh, about three and a half. But it's really cute, isn't it? And then um, what I wanted to do is, I already had some butterflies die cut it out when I was playing with the butterfly brilliance. So these, this is the designer series paper that's coming with the butterfly brilliance paper. Um, I believe the butterfly brilliance is an early release from, sorry, it's an early release from the new annual catalog that's coming in a couple months. Um, but I don't know. I don't, I was, I think I'm under the impression this designer series paper that is out right now that you can get with it will not be part of the, will not be part of that. So this, these butterflies came out of this sheet of paper and the way the dies are set up, it's really kind of nice in a way for when you're trying to just cut out one is this die comes like that and then you can they will lay right on top of here and you can get all six of these butterflies die cut it out at once so it's really cute you could also take this this would be clever is you could take this and um put it on a full sheet of paper and have that be a cut out of a card that'd be really cute too so that's what i have here and what i was going to do is just do a little cheat cheat wheat and just add some of these on here maybe the big yellow monarch right there or and we could still add some designer series paper on these three sides so we could do that with this butterfly collection too so we could use this one 
because this is a full sh strip. So we probably should have done that before we put our basket together, but we can still get by. Because I would probably cut each one of these sections. So if we wanted just this one here, let's get this little handy ruler. This would be, so that's three inches by three and a half. So we would want to cut this at um, three and a quarter. And we're going to cut that at two and three fourths. And then the other side we could cut, you know, pick which side you want, your two and three fourths. There we go. So then we could glue this or adhere this right here, like that. It'll just give the basket a little more. I'm just gonna use Tombow for the fold. Definitely would have been better to do this before we assembled, but that's okay. So now it's just going to look like that. And then we can put this one on this side, which is better. You're doing them in individuals because um, if you wrapped one sheet from here to here, if it's directional paper like this, your butterflies would be upside down on this other side. So it's good we're doing it like this. Now, you could also want, if you wanted a designer series paper on the inside, if you want it on your stripe, um, strap handle. <laughs> I know I'm really struggling with that word. So then what we can do is we can pop him up right here. We'll add some large dimensionals. We'll add some. I'm always, I'm always down to my little scraps of dimensionals. I saw two more on here before I have to start cutting this all up. So we're just going to put four on here. Like so. And like, we don't want any overhanging on the bottom. Anywhere else would be fine. And then we could add, oh, you know what? I have a cute, um, I have two cute yellow ribbons, but wouldn't that be cute on here? So let's go ahead and put this in here. Let me move my trimmer. This is how it always evolves, huh? <laughs> I get so excited when I start creating something. I'm like, oh, and then we could do this and this and this and this. So I'm thinking I want to make it um, frilly. So I wonder if we want to add even another ribbon to it. What's another cute color? I don't think I have another color that's going to work. So we'll just make it have long tails. And let's make it um, a bigger bow because we want it pretty. All right. So let's come under and over, and we're going to leave the tails long on it too, because we want it to come down. There we go. There's my little scissors. Little scissors. I said I was going to leave the tail long, and I then I cut one really short. <laughs> And that bow could actually have been a lot bigger. And usually I use um, glue dots on my bows just because it's super simple. There we go. That's cute. So if you had a bunch of these, now these are kind of big, these, uh, the eight and a half inch square. So if you were just giving someone a cute little Easter basket, I think these were great for that. But I think if you're doing favors at a, um, some kind of party or something, a lunch, 
or you know just something where you want a cute little favor i think these smaller ones are really cute um i just think that they're they still have a big volume in here like that's three fingers in there so that's quite a bit still when you're looking at little candies but this man that's a mama so let's put some uh, two different kinds of grass but i think i'm gonna go with the white grass the other grass i have has blues and greens and yellows Maybe if I add a little bit in here, it would look okay. It's just a lot brighter than the card. So, but that might add a little more color to it. There we go. So that'd be really cute, huh? So the only thing I did different with the acetate, which um, it was pretty easy and it's very strong. The only thing I'll say is remember one to take off the pr protective film on the acetate because I forgot to because I forgot there was protective film on here. And when I went to go put something on, I saw this loose plastic and I'm like, see, you can still see it right there. <laughs> so next time I make one of these, I'm going to take off the protective film. But this was very simple. Um, same premise as this one. Um, I'll show you the guidance I created for it. So for the six by six, I'm like coming down so you can see it. So I did, if you're using a six by six piece of paper, I did the north and south score at one and three fourths, the east and west score at two and one fourth. And then I cut this, the strips are in three fourths inches. So this again, this is the two and one fourth inches. Let me go ahead and write that. So. This is two and one fourth from here to here. And then this would also have been scored. I don't know, I wasn't <laughs> paying attention when I did it. Right, and this is the two and one fourth from here to here. And then here, from here to here, this is where the one and three fourths is. I hope that's not too confusing for you. But what it is is the two fourth inch. See one and three fourths. It's the if because I first tried this box at one. Well, I first tried it the way one and three fourths all the way around, but it didn't actually. I think I guessed on which one I used. So I started with one and a half. Because I thought, oh, the half-inch strips will work perfect. But the half-inch strips didn't cover the center, so it didn't work. Um, so then what I thought, okay, let me figure this out mathematically. And so if you do the two and one-fourth, that gives you three three-fourths-inch strips. So each one of these strips is three-fourths of an inch. So that's what you want to do when you're trying to figure out how to do the box is how much it's easy if you pick numbers that are divisible by the three strips, right? Now, if you wanted four strips, I don't know what it'd look like, but you could go for it. Four definitely divides better into an inch circumference kind of thing because inches are based on, I want to say like a four, you know, one eighth. So they're based on eighths, which is divisible by fours. Anyways, enough of that. <laughs> and then what I did is I also did the quarter inch score, but when I used the acetate, I did not do that part. I don't know if this basket, I didn't feel this basket really needed that. I think this basket came out really cute. If you're giving someone like a cute little hand sanitizer and a little candy or, you know, your office mates and you wanted to put a little goodie on there. Or you have a friend you're going to have lunch with and you just wanted to give her a cute little Easter thing. Or like I said, just, you know, you could even put little packs of coffee in here and stuff. Tea bags. Really cute. I'm really happy with this. These are both very cute. So I think they, if you were, um, you know, if you're the grandparent or the aunt and you're gonna be seeing your, you know, some little kids this holiday, this Easter, you could give them just a little basket and who wouldn't love just a little basket like that? So I definitely love this 
Butterfly Brilliance um, die and stamp set. I haven't really used the stamps. I've been definitely using the dies and the designer series paper is really cute. So I just want to say thanks for watching and have a great day.